Oh, I'm not feeling too good. <laughs> yeah, I definitely just myself. Throughout the entire existence of human history, there has approximately been 117 billion people born, lived, and died. Not counting our current population, of course. And in spite of what some people think, being significant in any type of historical context is probably the most difficult thing you can achieve as a human. Everybody who's famous today, whether it be The Rock or just some random internet personality, will more than likely be forgotten in about 10, 20 years time. Scoff if you want, think that's ridiculous if that's how you feel. I mean, it's Dwayne Johnson, dude. What are you on about? He's bigger than God! Uh, yeah, do us a favor and name one actor from the 1920s. They too were bigger than God. Depending on your personality, that's either incredibly comforting to you, or filling you with existential dread, but I'm personally quite happy knowing me sitting in my boxes at 3am, trolling children on Roblox is about as significant as a doctor doing heart surgery. However, that being said, some humans have done actions that have genuinely shaped the globe. And regardless of time, record, or space, their deeds will matter for as long as our species continues. One such individual was a Soviet naval officer, whose name I'm about to butcher, Vasily Arkhipov, who I'm going to lovingly refer to as Monster Schlong, for reasons that will make sense later on in the video. In order to do this story justice, I'm gonna have to take you back in time, and more specifically to the 1960s. The year is 1961. Ever since the end of World War II, Russia and America have been in a Cold War standoff, with each country placing strategic bombing points all over the globe. The two nuclear powerhouses were basically playing the biggest game of whose wiener's bigger, a classic childhood pastime played between son and father. The culmination of certain events forces Russia's hand into placing nuclear bombs in Cuban territory. The seventh premier of the Soviet Union, Nikita Khrushchev, had this to say at the time. I believe that a mutually democratic solution is possible. Um, if President Kennedy is uh, willing to admit 4.5 is not only average size, but uh, a respectable one. Prompting Kennedy to respond. That bubblegum bitch boy Nikita can goggle these presidential balls. America is for the people, by the people. And we must maintain that 3.5 is in fact the average. These two opposing ideologies forced the world into a standstill. With the doomsday clock hand nearly reaching 12, tensions were at an all time high. If you have any more interest in getting further context, my suggestion to you would to be look it up yourself, loser. There's a channel on YouTube called Extra History that does a deep dive into the exact events leading up to it. And speaking of leading up to it, you should probably get to the point. Now that you know the context of the situation, let's get into Valsi's story. On the date of October 27th, 1962, Valsi was stationed with his fellow seamen in a submarine near the border of Cuba. The USSR was deploying troops in that section of the sea in order to protect their international interests. As after all, the Soviet Union managed to smuggle nukes into Cuban territory, allowing the USSR at any point to target America itself. Now, I feel it's also worth mentioning that Valsi's submarine was was also armed with nukes. Nukes protecting nukes. A little bit funny. In spite of Valisi and his crewmates' best efforts to remain undetected, the Americans caught wind of an unfamiliar signal in that territory, and then proceeded to drop signaling death charges, a bomb specifically designed to destroy submarines and or force them to the surface. This was done in international waters, by the way, on the doorstep of a foreign hostile power with a nuclear arsenal that was provided by another foreign hostile power. <laughs> Geniuses. If in the very likely possibility America did manage to blow up one of those submarines, that would have gave Russia and Cuba justification to go into war, with the Americans being seen as the aggressor in this instance. And the crazy part is, it very nearly happened. Because of the crew of the B-59 Valencia ship had been employing evasion tactics for many days, they were unable to get in contact with Moscow HQ, meaning that the crew on board of that ship was completely unaware as to why they were being bombed, and could have easily, and did, make the safe assumption that war had broken out. More specifically, the captain of that ship, Valentin Gregachev, was convinced that the Americans were hitting them with a pre-strike, trying to knock out some of the most dangerous pieces on the board before charging Cuban soil to try and take the nukes off them. And because of this theory, my dude, my guy, wanted to hit them with the fat boy. Thankfully, for humanity's sake, American idiocy did not kill us all that day. And I personally believe this was because of some divine fortune. You see, typically on Soviet ships at the time, in order to use the special weapon, aka a nuke, only two sets of authorization was required, that being the a captain and a political officer. But because of Ulysses' position as the commander of the flotilla, meaning he's in charge of the set of submarines going out on patrol, three sets of authorization were required in order to launch. If you had to guess, my friend, my beautiful, 
God, you're sexy. Friend. Who do you think out of the three said yes and who do you think said no? Shitting pantsily, only one of them said no. And that one being Velissi. Thanks to blind fate, divine intervention, and or some pencil pusher back in Moscow who wrote that law into effect, the world was saved by one man. One incredibly brave and courageous man, mind you. To make the decision not to attack when you're stuck in a tube underneath thousands of liters of pressurized water, with zero contact to your commanding officers to inform you what is happening, as well as hearing and feeling death charges blowing up around your ship, takes quite frankly solid brass balls. To be so calm in one's resolve that the fear of dying in basically a metal coffin doesn't affect you, as well as going against the majority vote of your fellow officers. On a different day, on a different sleep schedule, on a bad lunch, that submarine could have launched that nuclear device straight at an American warship, thus leaving us in the modern era more than likely heavily mutated by irradiation clouds and scouring for rats in the street, or far more likely, the entire destruction of our species by our own hands. Actually, funnily enough, this is the reason why Kennedy's head exploded. It's a common myth that he was shot, and he was in fact just informed by his wife of the amazing coincidences that led to our survival, and his head just did that. During the pursuit of the B-59 submarine, the batteries ran low, forcing the submarine and her crew to come to surface, and immediately began engaging with conversation with the warship that was pursuing them. Thankfully, the Americans decided to let sleeping dogs lie, and set the submarine off on its way back to the Soviet Union. Probably because they just realized, <laughs> oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, we nearly killed everyone. Everything. Sir, calm down. You shut the fuck up, David. Sadly, the silly story doesn't end there, because he wasn't exactly embraced back with a hero's welcome. Him specifically and the entire crew were seen as a disgrace by their superiors. And according to Wikipedia, one of the superiors were specifically quoted saying, you should have gone down with the ship. According to Wikipedia as well, Vasily's wife was quoted as saying that he really did not like talking about the event that took place. And all he felt in his heart of hearts is they didn't appreciate at all what him and his crew went through, and all what they avoided. Understandably, the commanders probably had incredibly hurt pride because they were seen as a laughing stalk by one of their greatest enemies. However, I would rather be seen as a laughing stalk than unable to laugh at all because you're a skeleton and you're dead. Thankfully, it's not all doom and gloom for the man who saved the world. In fact, he lived uh, quite a cushy life in the end. He was allowed to continue his command of submarine squadrons and had a very fruitful career with the Soviet Union Navy, even winning a promotion to Rear Admiral in 1975 and even became the head of a naval academy. He finished up his career service at the rank of Vice Admiral before retiring in 1981. He passed away in the year of 1998 as a result of kidney cancer and never truly got the recognition he deserved for the actions he took. He was honored into 2017 post-mortem in which his corpse received the Future Life Award, a powerful spell placed on you by a necromancer in order to bring you back to life in decades to come. No, it's actually an award presented by an institute that celebrates individuals who have done actions of great courage for the betterment of humanity as a whole. Now that you know the story of Valency and his sacrifice, I am sure that you will take your life more seriously and be more grateful for the precious seconds and minutes you have. <laughs> You're just gonna go on the toilet and mess around with TikTok subway surfer footage for like the next three hours, aren't you? You waste of space. Or, you know, you could prove me wrong and share this to all of your friends so that they can appreciate their lives a little bit more. As without this man's brave decision, that TikTok app that you're scrolling through wouldn't exist. And neither would you. Nor would goth titties. One is more tragic than the other. I'll let you figure out which one. What's that for, silly? They have to legally subscribe. I guess you have to do what he says. The man did save the world after all. That's all I have to say on the matter, guys. Try to appreciate the time that you have or I'm coming for it. Bye-bye.